after I read Amy Cooper's apology, I decided to write my own on her behalf. So this is the Amy Cooper apology that would have actually meant something. Dear Chris Cooper, black Americans and white people listen up to. I am sorry for being so racist. And I don't mean I'm sorry for my racist act, although I'm also sorry for that. I'm sorry that the racism is so pervasive and insidious in me that I had a reservoir of weapons which rest on a deeply racist system from which I could draw upon to wound you. I'm so impressed that you remained as calm as you did in spite of my hysteria and ultimate desire to bring harm your way. This fact alone helped me to really consider what the plight of being black, particularly a black man in our country is. I think about how I would have behaved if the same thing had happened to me. I would have been crying and probably hysterical that somebody was being so unjust and ultimately evil. I was totally disconnected from your humanity almost like I wasn't even dealing with a human being at all. I think the fact that our country was founded on a constitution that decreed that people of your race were merely three-fifths of a human has deeply impaired white people's ability to be fully evolved in how we understand race. I always accepted the fact that once slavery was abolished, you were all given the right to be just like us. And sure, some liberties were unequal until the civil rights movement, but anybody could have flourished if they worked hard enough. During this time of great reckoning, as virtually the entire country has shamed and chided me, I decided to do a little more research. More than a few discoveries have truly jolted me. The level of ignorance I have been operating from is truly astounding. I won't go too far into the details of my findings, but I'll share just a few because I want the other white folks watching to do some further reflection themselves. Because even if you aren't as racist as me, it is likely that you operate with some seriously problematic premises. When Lincoln, delivered the Emancipation Proclamation. A bill was passed to bestow federal money in the sum of $300 for every enslaved person freed. Not, however, to the slaves themselves who had to suddenly forge a life on their own with no financial solvency whatsoever, but to the slave owners who had suddenly lost their free labor. There was no bill passed which allotted black slaves a parcel of land or a sum of money at any point since 1862. The realities that befell African Americans as a result of that are too numerous and cruel to recount. On the other, star on the other startling fact I came upon was that many of the plantations had freed slaves still living up to a century beyond emancipation on the property because they literally had no ability to begin a life elsewhere. If you wanna have even the smallest inkling as to how frustrating and demoralizing this is, just try playing a game of Monopoly with a couple of friends and give yourself a generous $150 to begin to their $1,000. Watch as you are never able to acquire property or if you manage to do so, how you will be forced to mortgage what you do own in order to pay the exorbitant rents. And this financial piece of the injustice is just one of so many threads. It has also been useful with the help of the podcast 1619 for me to reflect on the aspects of black American culture that have woven into the fabric of Americana that I benefit from and enjoy greatly while simultaneously debasing the black race so holy that I was willing to put a totally innocent man's life on the line because of my bigotry. From music to film to comedy to sports to basic oratory excellence and innovation, 
lastly, I will share one vulnerability. When my dog was taken from me so quickly without a chance to even make a case for why I am indeed a great and loving dog owner, I was truly devastated. But in these days since, I think it may be the perfect, I actually think it may have been the perfect punishment for my actions. I was presumed guilty from one snapshot of a moment and my voice and truth did not matter. How terrible, how debasing, and how despicable that you as a black man, and you as black Americans must experience this probably many times in your life. So to conclude, I'm sorry for being so ignorant. I am sorry I live in a country that allows this ignorance to flourish. I'm sorry that I probably did scare you, even though you remain calm because most of your life has been training ground for dealing with varying degrees of racial mistrust before you even open your mouth. I'm sorry that my fragility rendered me incapable of being self-reflective sooner than this calamity. I'm sorry I fucked up your bird watching on a beautiful Saturday. It was probably one of your favorite respites during this godforsaken pandemic. I'm sorry that I'm a dis I'm sorry that my actions are not even that disturbing in the scheme of the atrocities committed to black Americans across these 400 years. I'm sorry for self-righteously condemning bad behavior like looting and rioting without truly understanding that the rules do not and cannot apply to you. So of course you have to seek countercultural and subversive means of being heard and seen and valued. I do not expect forgiveness. My aim now is to live in integrity, which means I will have to continue this pursuit of fierce honesty with myself. I will be committed to understanding the ways I can undo the racism that is so deeply embedded in my being as a result of being so inextricably bound to this nation. Who will join me?